And now on BBC One, here's Ken Hom creating a stir in the wok for the last time in the present series of his Chinese cookery. <laughs> Today's program is mostly about fish and seafood, and I think that we Chinese excel in cooking both. Later on in the program, we'll be visiting a fascinating Chinese fishing village. But first, though, I want to show you how to make the very popular sweet corn and crab meat soup. This soup can also be made with chicken instead of crab meat. If you're using fresh corn, you need about a pound in order to get 10 ounces of kernel, which is what I need for this soup. And if you have fresh corn, Cut it the kernels away like this, against the husk, leaving as much of the husk behind as possible. I prefer to use fresh corn, but it's so seasonal that you might find it more convenient to use frozen or tin corn. So for today's soup, I'm going to be using 10 ounces of tin corn. And now I'm ready to make my soup. For the soup, I'm using two pints of good homemade chicken stock. I think a good stock is very important because it's the foundation of a good soup. And a good stock is very easy to make. Just simmer some chicken parts with some garlic, spring onions, and ginger for at least two hours. Be sure to never let it come to a boil or else the stock will be uh, cloudy. Then strain it and take off any surface fat and then it's ready to be used. Or you can uh, have it frozen until you need it. And here's what a good stock should look like. It's nice and clear and very appetizing. Add the corn to the stock. And let it simmer for about 15 minutes before adding any of the other ingredients. The nice thing about having stock is that the soup is very quick to make. Now it's been simmering for 15 minutes, add the other ingredients. I'm using one tablespoon of rice wine, or use dry share if you can't get rice wine, two teaspoons of finely uh, chopped gi fresh ginger, and ginger is often used in Chinese seafood cookery to counteract the strong taste of seafood, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of sugar, and now I'm going to thicken the soup with two teaspoons of corn flour and two teaspoons of water. Mix that together and add it to the soup. And stir that around and let it simmer for about a minute or so so that the flour can cook thoroughly through the soup and to thicken it very slightly. And the next ingredient is crab meat. I prefer to use fresh crab meat. And if you get fresh crab meat from your fishmonger, Ask for plain and not dressed crab meat. And if you can't get fresh crab meat, um, you can use frozen, or if you really press, tin. For the soup, I'm using six ounce of white crab meat, but you can use white or brown crab meat, or a combination of both. Stir that in. And now I'm ready to put the finishing touches on this soup. For this, I'm using one egg white and I'm mixing in one teaspoon of sesame oil to give it a little bit of flavor and mix it together like that. This will give a very nice appearance to the soup. Add this to the soup. And the way to add it is pour it in a steady stream like this, and with a fork, make a figure eight pulling the egg white strands together. And as the egg floats on top, the egg white, look at it, it makes these very nice strands. And now the soup's ready to be served. 
Mmm, looks very nice indeed. Very appetizing with the corn. And I like to garnish it with some finely chopped spring onions, which add a nice balance to the crab meat. And it's a very easy and appetizing soup to make. And that's sweet corn and crab meat soup. We Chinese are obsessive about having fish and seafood as fresh as possible. Whenever I'm in Hong Kong, I love to go to eat at one of the many fishing villages nearby where you can actually buy fish live. I'm in the little fishing village of La Faoshang, which is on the west coast of the new territories of Hong Kong. Behind me, just over there, is the People's Republic of China. This bay, known as Deep Bay, has junks that fish in the South China Seas, and they bring in their catch daily to this fishing market here. Fish is brought into the village from the fishing junks by sampans, these days equipped with outboard motors. Hong Kong's fishing fleet catches about 90% of the seawater fish eaten in the territory. La Fao San is famous for its oyster beds, and the village supplies oysters fresh to Hong Kong and dried for export. Oyster sauce, one of the most delicious ingredients in Cantonese cooking, is also made here. The oysters here are huge. But we Chinese never eat them raw, since we think this is unhealthy. We like them cooked, especially stir-fried with eggs or deep-fried. Every day, the village here is visited by people who come here to buy fish for the restaurants and markets of Hong Kong. Here you can get all sorts of fishy things. This stall sells only dried fish and seafood. These are pieces of shark's fin which can be used to make shark's fin soup, as can this shredded shark's fin. Both have a highly prized gelatinous texture when cooked and are very expensive indeed. These are dried scallops, which are delicious when used to give a special flavor to dishes such as stir-fried green vegetables. You can also buy salted dried fish, which can be chopped and cooked with rice to make a very nutritious breakfast dish. Almost all the fish and seafood here is sold live. There's a huge variety of exotic looking fish, though most of them belong to the Grupa family. This prehistoric looking creature is a lion fish, which has a poisonous fin on its back. Today, there's a good variety of seafood. There are several types of prawns, including tiger prawns. These are spiny lobsters. And these are regular, small, South China Sea crabs. Many of the fishing people here are Hakka people who originally came from the north of China. They have their own language, and the women wear these very distinctive hats. I'm meeting some friends for lunch, so I'm going to buy some fish for us to eat. I've decided to buy a large garupa, which is clearly very fresh. The next thing is to take the fish to the restaurant. Restaurants like this are common in fishing villages in Hong Kong. They'll provide the rice and vegetables, but you're expected to bring the fish. 
After the fish has been cleaned and slit, it's salted, and some shredded fresh ginger is scattered over it. Later it will be sprinkled with other seasonings before it's served. It then goes into the steamer for about 15 to 20 minutes. Meanwhile, my friends have bought some crab. Spring onions and ginger are put into the wok, and the crab, which has already been deep fried, is added. Next, the chef adds rice wine, water, dark soy sauce, salt, light soy sauce, and finally, some sugar. The crab is braised for a minute or two. Some corn flour is added to thicken the sauce. A little more soy sauce, a quick stir, and it's ready. Fish has a very important place in Chinese cuisine. To serve a whole fish is considered a sign of wealth. The most delicious parts are the tail, eye, cheek, and lips. Here, you don't turn over your fish to eat the other side. Fisher folk believe that to do so means their boat might capsize. After our fish and crabs, we had some stir-fried green vegetables and plenty of steamed rice. It was an utterly delicious lunch. Didn't that steamed fish look nice? Well, I can tell you it's very easy to make at home, and I'd like to show you how. It's called steamed fish with garlic, spring onions, and ginger. And uh, steaming fish is very popular in southern China, which is where this dish comes from. For this recipe, you need about 12 ounces to one pound of fish fillets or whole fish. Be sure to get a really fresh, firm white fish, such as a mullet, a haddock, cod, or sea bass. Don't use an oily fish, such as a mackerel, or herring because it's not suitable for steaming. I'm using a whole place. And we Chinese like to steam a fish with the head on because we think it uh, tastes better this way. When you get a whole fish like this, you may need to remove the gills like that if your fishmonger has not already done it. This gill it will add a slightly bitter taste to the fish. Then put the fish on a heat proof platter and sprinkle it on both sides with about one teaspoon of coarse sea salt, or you can use ordinary salt. And this will help to firm up the fish by drawing out some of the moisture and also gives the fish a bit of taste. Then sprinkle on about one tablespoon of finely chopped ginger. And ginger is often used to balance the fish flavor in Chinese cookery. Now my fish is ready to be steamed. Steaming is an important technique in Chinese cooking. It uses gentle heat to cook delicate foods like fish or uh, chicken to preserve its natural flavor. And there are several types of steamers that you can use. This is a European type of steamer and it's widely available. The water goes in here and the food goes here. Be sure that your plate is never too big to block all the holes, otherwise the steam won't be able to cook your food. This is a Chinese bamboo steamer, and the food goes into this, on top of these uh, bamboo slats, and the lid goes on top of that, and the whole thing sits inside a wok. This time of uh, steamer is best for dumplings or for reheating food, and uh, it's not appropriate for steaming a fish because the bamboo can easily absorb the fish flavor. My favorite way of steaming the fish is in a wok here. I like to use a wok with um, a wok stand, a rack, and a lid. You need to put in two inches of water inside the wok. Put your plate with the food on top of the rack like that. And be sure there's at least a one inch gap between the edge of the plate and the water level. Otherwise, the water might seep onto your food and you don't want that. Cover it tightly and steam it until it's done. 
for a thin, flat fish like this, I would steam it for about five minutes. And if it's thicker and rounder fish, I would steam it for about 10 minutes or more until it's done. Now I think my fish should be done. Now, how do you know when the fish is done? Well, simply uh, press it like this, and if it's quite firm, it's a good indication that it might be done. And you might want to cut in a little, like that, and the, the flesh is nice and white. That means the fish is done. Take it out. Oh, it looks rather spectacular, a whole fish, any time that a whole fish is served. Pour on one tablespoon of light soy sauce. Sprinkle on two tablespoons of finely chopped spring onions, and spring onions also add a nice flavor. And now I'm going to finish this off in a spectacular way. Heat up one tablespoon of oil, and here I'm using ground nut, but you can uh, use corn oil if you wish. Add one teaspoon of sesame oil to that. And flavor the oil with two garlic cloves, thinly sliced. And heat it until it gets really quite hot. Be sure the garlic doesn't burn. When it's nice and brown like this, it's perfect. Take this mixture and pour it over the fish. This nice and sizzly. And what a spectacular way to have fish. That's steamed fish with garlic, spring onions, and ginger from southern China. Here's another steamed fish with garlic, spring onions, and ginger. And this time, I'm using red mullet. I would serve this with a tomato egg flour soup, which is light and refreshing, a deep fried chicken, which is nice and crispy, and an easy vegetable dish, cauliflower with oyster sauce, and of course, steamed rice. And I think that all together, these dishes make a splendid dinner party spread. Now I'd like to show you a place setting for a formal Chinese meal. Each person has a rice bowl in front of them, and to the left is a soup bowl with a spoon, and next to that is a small dish for any dipping sauce, and then to the right is a small bowl for tea if tea is being served. And finally, chopsticks are always set to the right of the rice bowl. Of course, you don't need to have a Chinese dinner set to enjoy a Chinese meal. European China will do just as well. Another dish that is perfect for a family meal or a special dinner party is shredded chicken with sesame seeds. And it's very easy to make. It's nice and spicy, and it comes from Western China. For this recipe, you'll need eight ounces of chicken breast cut into shreds like that. Then coat it with one egg white, two teaspoons of corn flour, and half a teaspoon of salt. Mix that together very well so that each piece of chicken is coated with this mixture. And this will protect the individual pieces of chicken while it cooks. Put it in the fridge for at least 20 minutes or longer. Now this dish is very fast to cook, so it's important that you have everything ready and on hand. So now I'm going to make the sauce. For the sauce, I'm using one teaspoon of dark soy sauce. Add two teaspoons of rice wine, or use dry share if you can't get rice wine. One teaspoon of cider vinegar. Half a teaspoon of sesame oil. one teaspoon of sugar, and two teaspoons of finely chopped spring onions. The last two ingredients is what gives this dish that special Western Chinese taste, and that is Sichuan peppercorns, which have been roasted and ground, and chili bean sauce. And for the sauce, I'm using a half a teaspoon of each. It's a lovely combination. Mix that well together 
and now I'm ready to cook the dish. Heat up a wok until it's hot, and I'm using a one-handle wok because I'm stir-frying, and then add the oil so that the oil can coat the surface of the wok, keeping as much of the food from sticking as possible. And for this, I'm using five fluid ounce of groundnut oil, but you can use corn oil if, if you wish. When the oil is moderately hot, add the chicken, and here I have some chicken that's been in the fridge for 20 minutes. Stir that around in the oil to keep the chicken pieces from sticking. It's a lovely way to cook chicken. And the sauce is just really delicious. When the chicken starts turning white like that, immediately take it out. Drain it, leaving about one tablespoon of oil in the wok. And if your wok is sticking, you can certainly wash it or wipe it out and then return the oil to the wok. Add one tablespoon of white sesame seeds, and this will add a nice crunch and toastiness to the dish. Stir that around to brown. And the heat makes them pop all over the place. Add the sauce. And the sauce will immediately come to a boil since it's so hot. And now we turn the chicken to the sauce and toss it in that sauce so that it's nicely coated with that wonderful combination. Mmm, it smells so good. And now it's ready to be served. It's really lovely. Shredded chicken with sesame seeds from Western China. The shredded chicken with sesame seeds is a delightful dish. In China, it's popularly known as strange taste chicken because it combines hot, sour, sweet, salty, and spicy flavors all at once. I think it goes very well with honey glazed pork, which is pork braised in a rich honey sauce. And I would serve these lovely deep fried green beans and of course, steamed rice. All of today's recipes can be found with lots more information about Chinese cooking in the book which accompanies the series. Sadly, this is the last program in the series. I hope you enjoyed trying some of the dishes that I've shown you, and I want to thank you for joining me. And perhaps one day, if we chance to meet, we can greet each other in the traditional Chinese manner, which in Cantonese is nisik zhou fan ma, which literally means, have you eaten yet? Thank you.